This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Until midnight tonight from the East Coast to the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, as we always like to do, we introduce you to Larry Bubbles Brown. Yes, his real name is Bubbles. Yes, yes I should legally change. I was going to ask you about that. You know, um, uh, uh, do you think of yourself, like for instance, my real name is Bennett Schwarzman, mm-hmm. right? And if somebody said Bennett, I guess I would respond. But what do you respond better to? Hey, Bubs or Larry? Uh, everyone called me Bub, yeah, so I guess it's that. That's kind of, that's, I never liked Bubbles, but Bub is kind of cool. So. You never liked Bubbles? Yeah, I'll tell you. Why? It just sounds like a stripper or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, it sounds like, just like a stripper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mm. Sound a little, you know, a little hacky, dude, to have a nickname as a performer. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, but as we say, we've told the story before. He got his name Bubbles from Paula Poundstone. Paula Poundstone, yeah. Who just started calling you Bubbles because you wanted to go to the uh, the, the hot tub. The hot it? tub, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of which, I had a horrifying anniversary uh, this past week. Was the uh, 42nd year that I first saw my first live comedy show at the Punchline. 47 years. 42, 42. 42, 42 years. Oh, God. The, yeah. the, don't you, do you wake up, I got to say something, folks. You know, I guess this program only appeals to older people because really everything we reference is about getting old. <laughs> But when you look back at 42 years, does, didn't it just kind of, I mean, oh, I look at mine. By, yeah. Well, it went by, but if I look at it in the long run, it went by slowly. If I look back at it in the short run, it's fast. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In other words, I can go back now to, oh, let's say, what I was doing uh, when I was uh, 29, which was I was here in New York City. I just started my first job uh, at uh, WMCA. It was a big deal. I was in New York. But I think about the whole process of all the things I was involved in, all the things that I did during that period of time, and it seems like a lot of stuff, you know, like going to Woodstock as an example, you know. How did I get up there, <laughs> you know? Uh, I, I guess I drove. Yeah, I drove. I stayed overnight somewhere. I can't remember somebody's house. Really? Yeah. Wow. And then I got onto the property uh, by going in the back way and going to the press tent. Um, and I drove my car right onto the property at Woodstock. But I think about all of that, and I think about having done it, and it, it really kind of, I don't know. It, it just it just seems like did I do all that? Did I get all that? You know, and then I go up to this place and I went to that place. Do, do you feel that way? Yeah, and it seems exhausting. It seem your life seems exhausting, especially now because I'm kind of a housebound for the most part. You know, I don't have adventures anymore. But then again, yeah. who can have an adventure during COVID? You know. The thought of doing all that stuff now just would kill us. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't mind adventures. I mean, I would love, you know, I mean, my last big, our big last adventure was 10 years ago when we went to China. You know, and I can talk about that endlessly. But I, I just, you know, I used to always, my whole thing was I used to bring whatever I did out in the street into the studio, you know. Oh, guess what I did yesterday? Oh, I had this problem at Costco. I had this thing that happened to me, blah, 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 blah. I don't have that anymore. What do I say? Gee, I went to the living room today. (laughs) Wow. There's a lot going on in the living room. The TV set was on, and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the stationary bike is still stationary. 
you know. So I mean, it, it's just, I don't know, it just goes by in a weird kind of way. And then I wake up every morning and I'm on this drug called pregabalin, which is Lyrica, which is for my my neuropathy, which a lot of you are going to get, folks, so get ready for it, you know. And, and it, it makes me loopy, and I'm loopy right now. So if I sound like I'm talking in circles, please stop me. <laughs> but when you look back on your life, I mean, what do you what do you see? I mean, you see, oh, you look at a lot of stuff, and there's a lot of minutia there, isn't there? Yeah, there is. And uh, it's, imagine how much we forget. Well, I mean, it, it just that we did things, and and uh, they were they weren't exhausting, but they were complex. I don't know if I'm making any sense here. It's probably the drug talking. <laughs> the drug talking. <laughs> you know, I mean, but you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, uh, like, uh, for instance, let's, let's just talk about a time you did Letterman. I mean, you remember traveling to New York and go staying at a hotel and blah, 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 right? I do. The first time was... Uh yeah, I remember flying back there on, uh, it was a big 747, it was United. Uh-huh. I was sitting next to some businessman, he said, what are you doing in New York? I said, I'm doing Letterman, I don't think he believed me. <laughs> 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 and then I got, uh, I got bumped, so I'm, I'm sure he thought, oh, but I was totally lying. <laughs> <laughs> So well, do you remember that? I remember you you don't say to somebody, I'm doing Letterman, do you? Because they might think you're a male hooker. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. <laughs> that is funny. You think about that. I think David Feldman gave me a ride to the airport. I remember that. Mm-hmm. Um, stayed at the Berkshire. Is it the Berkshire, Berkshire, Berkshire. Omni? Yeah, there's a Berkshire Omni. Yeah. That was a hotel Letterman put everybody up at. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Wow. And then, how, uh, do you remember the whole experience of being there and waiting to go on? And... I do. I remember the, I couldn't fall asleep. And I had, I'd been up for like 36, I got bumped the first time, so which is good. Was, I mean, I just couldn't fall asleep. And I was, I was loopy, so I was glad I got bumped. And they, we'll have you back. So I, uh, they flew me back to San Francisco. Then I went back and six weeks later and did it. But it is funny. Oh, oh. Pump the first yet, time. though, you know, because I do remember the hotel. I remember, yeah, going over to NBC. So you had to go through that whole process twice. Yeah, it was exhausting. Now the second time, were you, did you get enough sleep? I slept. I took a Valium. Yeah. Oh, great! <laughs> Doing your act on Valium. Yeah. And then I went, I remember going to NBC and people were lined up for the Letterman show. And I went, uh, I started going down the line and say, hey, I'm going to be on the show tonight. It's my first time. Be kind. And I was working the crowd. Were you really working the crowd? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And they were kind. They were, I was so afraid. Of, people used to bomb on that show. I was just so terrified I was going to bomb. So I just. Well, we had a friend who bombed on that show. Yes. It, it bombed terribly. And he's a good comic, and he does his show occasionally. Will Durst. Mm -hmm. Durst's set was just, I don't know. What happened was I think he got advice from the producer, um, which I think at the time was Bob Morton. And Morty told him, don't do this, but do that, blah, blah, blah. And, and so he came out and did what Morty's told him to do, and it bombed. Just bombed. And I felt so bad for Will because that was a place you don't want to bomb. You know, this is your big shot. And, I mean, he was never asked back. Um, right, and it was an easy... A lot of comics did bomb on there. Yeah. I think Judy Tenuta had a terrible bomb, and she was very funny. But... Oh, really? Did they ever have her back? They must have. No. No, oh. really? Not? No? No. Where is Judy Tenuta these days? I don't know. She was uh, huge for a while. Wasn't her, all disappear. Wasn't her one of her claims to fame is that she was Emo Phillips' girlfriend? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
which uh, I got to tell people, uh, I don't know if people remember Emo Phillips because he's kind of disappeared from view. But uh, Emo, to begin with, was one of the funniest comics I ever saw. I yeah. mean, would you agree? I mean, intelligent comedy. Yeah, he was. A, he was on the verge of becoming big in the eighties. So. Well, he he he, he kind of made it, and his uh, 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 what it was is you heard him, and you went, oh, "This this guy can't be funny. He's doing some kind of character here." And you know, I don't, I didn't like character comics that much, although Goldthwait I loved, and. Uh, you know, I guess most comics on stage are a character. I mean, you're a character on stage, right? Uh, kind of. Just I'm kind of myself, <laughs> which might be a character. I don't well, know. anyway, I mean, Emo was this, uh, you know, like, uh, talked really funny and he's strange. But if you listen to the comedy, it was so intelligent. I remember one line of his that just absolutely laid me on the floor. And that was, he said... Um, um, something. What was it about glass and sand? He said, uh, um, "What is it? Bottles don't like the beach because no, that, God, I can't remember now." See, I mean, that's how that's how screwed I am. But the joke had to do basically with the fact that glass was made from sand, and mm-hmm. and he said, "Why is the sand? Why is the sand?" Uh, Blah blah blah. He said, "Maybe there." I think something like the sand is envious of the of the bottle, or something like that. And I went, "Wow, that's one of the most intelligent jokes I've ever heard in my life." You know? Yeah, this whole act was a joke that were that good. Yeah, that they were they were really brainy, smart. You know? Uh, and I'm trying to remember what that joke was now. See, here I go. I say I'm going to tell you the joke, and then I can't. Yeah, I want to know the joke now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it, anyway, it was a great it was a great line, and I said to myself, "This guy is really smart, you know. This guy is really brainy." And then I would sit down with him sometimes when we were backstage at a club, or we I wound up I think at a party one night with him, completely out of character, and just one of the m- most intelligent people that I've ever had a conversation with. Really? Yeah. Just amazing, just amazing. Uh, and but he brought that to the act, but you had to listen for it, you know. Um, uh, so um, anyway, I just well, he is he's still around. I right before the pandemic, he was playing in the Bay Area, so he's oh still really? Up. Oh okay, because I mean he he was he was very good. And uh, who was that? Who was that guy that was? He was in uh, Reservoir Dogs. He was the the radio guy, the guy on the air. You never see him. Oh, uh, uh, Stephen Wright. Stephen Wright. What are, what happened to Stephen Wright? Stephen Wright was also one. That was the most difficult act I've ever seen to do. I mean, it was one one liner after another. Uh, none of them connected to you. <laughs> none of them connected to each other. Just nothing but one line. It's like he, he sat down, wrote a bunch of jokes on a pad, and just said, I will read these in a row. I don't care if they have any relationship to the joke that was... Well, that's why he back. said he, you know, he'd walk from one corner of the stage to another. He said he's trying to remember the next joke. Oh, really? Yeah, because that is. I know they're so hard to remember them all, so that, he had that problem too. But he was very funny because he was doing one joke after another, and every one of them landed. Oh, great joke, yeah. yeah every one of them landed. And I guess in his act, he had a an interesting way of doing it that allowed him uh, to um, uh, just say, okay, well, that, that joke doesn't work. Throw it out. So that he had nothing but gold that he was reciting yeah. when he got on stage after times of, oh, there goes my watch. No, Jack Bishop called me. Anyway, um, I'll, hey, what's going on? Wait, I'll call you later. <laughs> Bye. Uh, anyway, I don't know what that was all about. My watch goes off now. You don't understand that, I know, but my watch goes off and has phone calls on it and so on. Um, but Stephen Wright was just brilliant too. I mean, but these are comics who came and went, kind of. I mean, Wright had a big following at one time. 
he still tours. He can, he can fill out. He can fill out a big theater. So he had definitely has a following. He can. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good. I'm happy. I think he. What I'd heard was when he did the Tonight Show and made a big splash that uh, no one in TV knew what to do with him. They were trying to get him a show and everything. And what? Can, we're not sure what we're gonna do. And he had that. He looked weird. You know, he had the hair thing and the... And the hair and the weird voice. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, yeah Very you, funny. You, you, yeah. What do you do? A, you know, a show called Hair Steven? You know. I mean, that's amazing. But I, uh, you know, a lot of comedians that, 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 that were really good who just, they didn't, they didn't make it for some reason. When we talk about making it, you know what making it is? Dis- define making it, Larry. Making it would be well. In my case, I I think I made it because I made a living at it. But making it would be kind of being a household name, I guess. A household name, but basically, what you got to do in order to do that is get a TV show. Yeah, you got to have your own show. You got to have your own do show. Do a bunch of movies. Yeah, or do movies, one or the other. But uh, the, you've got to go to that. So really, what you're doing is you're getting out of the very thing that got you where you are. Mm-hmm. In other words, if you're going to make it big. I mean, for instance, we we t- we uh, take a guy like uh, uh, the guy that just died. Oh man, my mind today is just screwed. Uh, Bob Saget. Bob Saget. See, I go to I go. What I should do, Bubbles, is have you move to New York and be with me <laughs> at all times when I can't remember a name. <laughs> I'll be like a Google assistant. You'd be yeah, Google Larry. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, so um, uh, uh, Saget. Um, really got his fame from the TV shows not from his act of course yeah and and, and yet when he died everybody thought his, he was one of the greatest acts I ever saw you know he was terrific he was incredible uh, and so you go to TV and that's what people know you for you know America's dad I think when, when he died they said America's dad has died I thought that was Bill Clinton, but until we found out he was drugging all those women, he was America's dad. <laughs> now, now, now he's America's perverted uncle. Uh, but it was, um, it, you know, I mean, when you do TV, it kind of is a spoil factor there, you know? They kind of, uh, you know, they, they typify you to that role they saw you in. Because that's the only thing they know you for. Seinfeld. Yeah, I think uh, most comics are doing comedy to get to something bigger than that, like uh, Steve Martin. Uh, he never did stand up after being the biggest comic probably ever. So. Right. Right. Well, you know what he? I think he. I heard that he said, after the third. You know, I said I didn't had an hour that I did, and then I did that and I created a second hour. By the time I got to the third hour, I found I was just repeating myself and decided to quit stand-up. You know, because yeah, he, he said these comics are right now or every year. He said he doesn't think that's possible. He said most comics, the best, have two or three hours, and then you're doing the same things over and over. Yeah, but, I mean, that's the, that's the big problem right there. Uh, the problem is is that uh, you, you, you know, you've used all... To begin with, when you do TV, you are literally selling your material. I'm not saying selling it to an audience. You're selling it, period. You mm-hmm. That's it. You can't do that again. Because everybody's seen that. You know? So did you find when you did your set on Letterman, you were going to do material that you, you pretty well realized maybe you can't ever do again? I thought about that, but then I kept doing it because nobody comes out to see me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of times, Bob, Bobby Slate used to say to me, oh, I keep trying to come up with new material. I don't want to keep doing the same material in clubs all the time. And I said to him, yeah, but that's what they want to hear. You know, they've heard you before, but they want to hear the joke again. Does oh, that make uh, sense? The uh, first time I saw Bobby, I went back wanting to see the same stuff, yeah. Yeah. And and I said, they're not going to hold it against you because you did a bunch of material they've already heard because they got somebody with them. They say, listen to this. This is really funny. You know? Yeah. 
So I don't know. But television just, you know, it was, it was like the old story with vaudeville. You know why vaudeville died? Because television came in. And these guys went on Sullivan and uh, spun their plates, and that was their act. I mean, when they did vaudeville, they had 20 minutes. They came out. I heard but, some of the comics in vaudeville had like seven or eight and did that for literally 20 years. Yeah, and went, went a whole circuit, you know, all over the country. Worked constantly doing the same exact act. And you're right, some of them were 10 minutes long. Some of them were 20 if you were a headliner, you know. And that was it. But then they went on TV and they did this act once. That's it. You know, so, I mean... uh uh, it it uh, it killed vaudeville, absolutely killed vaudeville, uh, which was a wonderful form of entertainment, by the way. I, I never, what, I never. What saw. type of act did they have on vaudeville besides the con? They, have well, a they comic. had everything. Okay, they had jugglers. They had people come out on unicycles. They had dancers. They had magicians. Uh, that's what was so great about vaudeville. They, everybody had a 10-minute act, and they came out and did it. Maybe there were 10, 15 acts on a, on a show, and everybody would come out and do their act. And you go, well, I don't like this, but I know that 10 minutes from now there's going to be another one I am going to like. So, so, uh, it, so it was similar to the Ed Sullivan show. Oh, the Ed Sullivan show really was, in, was what vaudeville was. Okay. Because you, if you look at Sullivan, I mean, what? He follows... Uh, um, uh, Enrico Caruso, uh, who, uh, who Mario Lanza, okay, opera singer. Mario Lanza with uh, Topo Gigio followed by a bicycle act. <laughs> and what he was doing was vaudeville. But it killed vaudeville because, what, do you then go back on the road and try this? Plus, vaudeville shows died out when that happened because television was doing them one better. Yeah. Everything becomes passe. Okay? You and I become passe. I become yeah. passe. I know that I am yesterday's cold meal sitting in the refrigerator. <laughs> you know. Really? So and and you're 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 still out there working. You know, so still working, but yeah, yeah, uh, but you, you know, pretty soon you're 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 the cold uh, last night's cold dinner in the refrigerator. Yeah, so you know, it, it's not uh, it's not uh, um, it's not uh, it doesn't make us look forward to anything, does it, Larry? No, not at all. <laughs> yeah, whenever they listen to us, I wonder how many people just get depressed listening to <laughs> us. Talk. Yeah, we're too <laughs> maybe we're too realistic. I don't know, but. Well, I just you know, as I get older, I I find that like I, you know, I'm I'm a, I'm way older than you. You're 67 now, I think. Yeah, yeah. 68. 68, uh, uh, and I'm 82. So there's a difference of about 12 years there. Yeah, uh, 14 yeah. years, 14. And, and and I find at 82, I'm just completely irrelevant. You know. Nobody, Marjorie and I were thinking of actually starting a podcast called "Nobody Wants to Listen to Old People." That'd be good, you know. And and uh, because I I just find every day that there's something else happening that just you know I I heard about when I was younger, but I didn't realize I would get to the point where I was gonna gonna actually uh, be part of it, be part of the the uh, the scheme. And uh, is this is this making sense? I hope so. Yeah. What's, yeah. what's the oldest someone has worked in radio that was still kind of a big name? God, I, I really don't know. I don't think it's anything past. I don't think it's anything past eighty for sure. And I think maybe. Well, I mean, I worked till I was uh, seventy-five. Mm-hmm. All right, on radio, on you know some kind of form of radio. I've been doing the podcast ever since. But I don't consider that radio, you know. So I mean, uh, the oldest, uh, probably me. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, yeah. Thanks for asking the question, well, Larry. Did, uh, Paul, I really appreciate it. Did Paul Harvey do radio at? Uh, yeah, I think he was pretty yeah. old. I think he was in, in his eighties. Yeah, but he would go, "I'm Paul Harvey," the, yeah, and then he would pause. Good day. 
Yeah. <laughs> and all, I just thought that the day he died, he would go, I'm Paul Harvey. <laughs> Nothing. See, I mean, but I think he actually retired, if I'm not mistaken. But he he was he died, he died uh, at a very old age, and having done that show, I think into his 80s. So we probably just established who the oldest guy was in radio. Anyway, hey, listen, we better go here because we're running out of out of our allotted time. Uh, talk to you next week. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there he is, the lovely and attractive Larry Bubbles Brown. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. And there was Bubs, and uh, we'll see him again next week. Uh, we always like to have Bubs on, and uh, that's uh, the way it goes. Actually, I, I always forget that I should be looking at this camera, because what I do is I have a tendency to look down at... Uh, at the picture that's on my screen. Does that make any sense to you? I don't know if it does or it doesn't. But anyway, uh, I should be looking straight ahead right there, okay? Uh, but anyway, uh, we have some people here, uh, and they're, oh, a nice uh, nice little crowd here that we've got set. Uh, and oh, wait a minute, what is that? It's blurry because, oh, okay, Cobb's Comedy Club... I Emo know. Phillips. Emo Phillips. Oh, okay. Up Saturday, October 12, uh, 19th, 1991. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, he, he was so funny. He had one line that almost fell off my seat. I'm going to butcher it up, but he says when his dog, he, his dog you know, drinks out of the toilet and it makes him laugh so much, he says, especially when I'm sitting on it. <laughs> But his delivery, and remember, remember his haircut. He yeah, said he yeah. cut his own hair. Yeah, and his hair was jacked I'll, I'll up. tell you the strange really thing. I, I oh my god! Anybody here remember Emo Phillips at all? No, this doesn't look like a crowd though. But yeah, a little bit. Emo <laughs> never had an apartment. Okay, and here was his thing <clears> about <throat> it. I'm always on the road, so they put me up in nice hotels. So why shouldn't I just stay at the hotels? And he never really had his own apartment. He kept all his stuff at his manager's office. Really? That was it. That was Emo. What movie did Emo Phillips produce? Oh my God, I have no idea. Big hit. Big hit. Pee Wee Herman? Huh? Pee Wee Herman? Nope. Nope. Meet the Parents. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Apparently, he had the rights to the story or something like that. And so he wound up being one of the producers on Meet the Parents. Huh. Am I right about the name of that picture? It was the one with uh, uh, yeah. Robert De Niro, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And yeah he... I, I listened to the, the comedy, the uh, Sirius mm-hmm. XM. You know, they have all those comedy stations, so I have them all lined up. Yeah. And every once in a while, his stuff pops up. Yeah. pretty good yeah bob rubens bob rubens actually popped up a couple times lately well because he had an album or something like that ah yeah. yeah 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 yep 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 anyway uh so uh good evening to all of you uh here's jeff and here's josh and here's uh, brian uh and uh here's me okay so mm-hmm. i'm here as well and um uh, I was checking out the video from last night, and it looked pretty damn good. I, I made some changes to the way I I send it out, and I'm sending it out uh, at less resolution but more bandwidth, and so it really looks really it looks good. Looks good. Mm-hmm. So, and how did you, I look? Huh? How did I look? You look fine. But it's all about you, isn't it, Brian? No, it was all dark. Remember, I was in my car. I didn't see you at all. You looked the best you ever looked last night. <laughs> Thanks. Everybody you couldn't have looked off. better. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, and actually, that's a nice drive because it's an hour and 45 minutes. Yeah. So I, I did it. I timed it just right. So I left right at 730. Mm-hmm. So I got to hear, you know. Uh, the beginning of the show, and then and then uh, when I came on, when we came on, I, I just pulled over, and then because I didn't want to crash, you know, so I pulled over, 
to get to log on the show. Wasn't so. Kevin amazing last night, though? You could actually <laughs> tell by the amount of time that had passed what exit you were at. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. 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 Because he, uh, he drove that a lot. Were you driving home? No, you were driving to the office is what you were doing. Yeah. Yeah, I worked there today. So I drove up there last night, spend the night, because then I can get an early start. Yeah. And I'm yeah. not tired. Sometimes when I go on Fridays, I'll drive up there on Friday morning and then just really tired. How long does it take you to get there? Apparently, it took uh, some time because you spent the whole show with us. On yeah, about 1.45, an hour and 45 minutes. So You're going from where to where? From San Jose. Uh -huh. From San Jose to uh, Lodi. To so Lodi. Through Tracy. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Up through. Then, yeah. yeah. Through, five to nine, nine. Through the pass there, the. Um, yeah, ultimate pass. Ultimate yeah. Mountain pass. But that's a nice. That it looks nice when I'm coming home because all the all the mountains are green and you see the turbines. I know you say it's ugly, but well, it's nice. I just I just felt it was kind of an eyesore. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was it was wonderful the first time you see it and you go, oh my yeah. god, wow. doesn't that look terrific? You know, and then all of a sudden you realize that's really the big pieces of metal sitting up there on the hills, you know. And, and yeah, they're pretty huge. Yeah, they are pretty huge. But And when there wasn't any wind, they seemed to be going around, too. I, that one I couldn't figure out. Oh, everybody cheese it. Here comes Tony. <laughs> oh, he's been chatting with me. <laughs> what? He's been chatting today with me. Oh, he's been chatting with you? Have yeah. you been pestering Brian? No, 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 no. no. He, I don't think he had coffee yet. He only sent me like three at a time. Actually, I actually did. Have oh, wait, what did you say? What did you say, Tony? Said, I did Tony. have a cup of coffee, yeah. What, before you wrote him? Yeah. I had one in the morning, though. Oh, I, I had a cup. Oh, yeah. I can't even get this cup near the screen. Oh, yeah, uh, I got the same color, black. Well, the, like most most cu most cups are black, okay? That is true. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little strong, this one I made, though. I don't like when I make it too strong. Yeah. And we got Josh here. It's a good week for Josh to be here because a lot has happened in the news that I'm sure he would love to talk about. Uh, uh, but, uh, uh, yeah. How you doing, Josh? I'm doing good. How you doing? You doing good? Okay. Yeah, I'm good. I, I just wanted to see if you're okay. Uh, I'm okay. Yeah. Uh, a lot of a uh, lot of news mm -hmm. items happening today. Um, you know, that uh, probably or the last couple of days today, especially a Supreme Court nominee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, saw that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you know anything about this woman? Um, a little bit. I mean, you know, not a ton, but uh, I know a little bit, and. Mm -hmm. uh, I was watching the PBS nightly news mm -hmm. one time, maybe 10 days ago or so. And they ran like a little seven or eight minute, uh, little segment about her. Um, mm -hmm. they had kind of previewed like four or five main people that, you know, were up for the job maybe. Mm -hmm. And I happened to be just tuned into that night that she was on there. So I, you know, there was some information on there, but I kind of knew a little bit about her before that, just a little bit. Do you think it's a good choice? Yeah. I mean, it, you know, I'm sure it's, uh, I don't think it's bad or anything. I mean, it, it, it seems fun. You, uh, I mean, you, you don't know how, you don't know how any of this is going to go. I mean, it's just like any other job in the world. You can sort of think, you know, what you know, but then you get someone in there doing the job, you never know. But I mean, it's a, yeah. it's a good choice overall. I mean, I, I think that she seems like a really, um, she's like a really good, you know, person, you mm -hmm. know, just outside of the job, you know, uh, you know, a pretty decent person. And I, I think that kind of, you know, obviously I think that matters. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I think that her, you know, her judicial philosophy will be, you know, pretty well received. Um, in the past, she's, she's had a couple, uh, she's had a couple looks at some cases that involved like executive power and, uh, I liked what she had to say about some of that, you know, um, she, she had that now sort of famous opinion, you know, uh, I don't know, a year or so ago in the Trump administration where she put that line in there that, you know, presidents are not kings. And, uh, you know, I obviously would agree. Um, so some of her, 
some of her judicial philosophy on you know executive power is is sort of that it's been a little expanded over the years and it might be time to start scaling that back mm -hmm. which i agree with um you know republicans used to be the party that didn't think presidents were kings right <laughs> right and uh, <laughs> they've sort of strayed from that path so well, I don't see where they can complain about something Well, they, like where they've really strayed from that path, weren't they anti-autocracies? Oh, yeah, right. You know? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And is, now I mean, they're it, coming out and defending yeah. Putin for when his it, actions? Yeah, when it, uh, when it became, you know, inconvenient for them, um, they certainly abandoned that, that ship pretty quickly. But, yeah, you know, she's had some looks at executive power in two or three high profile cases and in each time she sort of came out strongly in favor of limiting executive power or forcing the executive to do something that a lot of when, people When you're didn't talking think. about executive power, are you talking about political executive political power? Yeah, like the president yeah. of the United States. I mean, powers outside of those granted to them by the constitution mm -hmm. or protections not granted to them by the constitution such as mm -hmm. I don't have to turn over these documents because I'm the president of the United States and I'm special. And if I turn over these documents, that's not good for me and it won't be good for all the future presidents. And, you know, she came down on the side of, I'm sorry, but that's the way that it is. If it damages you or if it damages future presidents, that's the price of our, that's the price of our democracy. You know, that's the price of our, separation of powers continuing to work as they were designed to do and as we need them to do i think um, she, i think she's got a good chance of being confirmed without much trouble yeah i i, I don't think that you know anything like you know that. i think i think the I usual I, republican suspects will be against her well, i'm sure you yeah. know <laughs> only because she's biden's choice you right. know if trump had chosen the same exact person they would have been all for it you know yeah i'm sure i mean you know and and look, you know, and I mean, in my opinion, uh, I think that will be okay, and, and it and it should be. I mean, even if you had some issues with her, well, I mean, look, Trump was allowed his choices, and this is how it works. You know, we had an election; Biden won. He's going to get his choice. And I honestly, I kind of like the fact, you know, when you have a judge that you can find some disagreement with. I mean, big whoopee. That's that's how it's supposed to work what i thought was I mean? what i thought was really interesting is she got out in front of uh somebody who would want to put something against her by saying that her uncle was in prison yeah she's yeah. got a family that's not you know exactly you know uh upper east side yeah but i mean she brought it out at, <laughs> on the speech and she said first thing i want to say yeah. is yes i do have an uncle who wound up in prison or is still in prison or whatever. Yeah, she's and, never tried to hide any but of that. What, right. but what she did, though, was she blunted any argument about that, you yeah. know. Uh, and I thought that was good. I thought that was terrific, right. you know. I like, yeah, because I, it's, not, it's yeah. not her fault. It doesn't have anything to do with her. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, she's not in prison. So, I mean, what's uh, and took no part in any of those crimes. So... <laughs> Yeah. You know, but but you're right. I mean, they would still use things like that. So, um, you know, but if you find some things with a judge on the on a on the Supreme Court that you don't like or agree with, that's that's okay. You know, I mean, that's, I mean, I I, I don't think we want to. I I mean, I don't like some of the language that it got. You know, like Biden says she's a proven consensus builder. Well, I, I mean, I know why he's saying that, and that's political speak, but. I'm not looking for a consensus builder on the Supreme Court, you know, to make everyone get along. I'm no, looking you're for looking for somebody who's going who to make decisions yeah. based yeah. on the law and is blind to the fact of whether or not it'll bring blacks and whites together or what the fuck mm -hmm. ever, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I, I that's why I can't stand that that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I understand that he has to say that so that he can make it sound good for the people in this country that are, you know, fucking stupid or whatever. Well, I mean, also, also, I mean, it's kind of a shame that when you're president these days, 
you have to pick your, you don't, don't necessarily pick the best person for the job. Mm-hmm. You pick the one who's going to have the best chance of getting uh, passed by the Senate. Yeah. You right. know, in the old days, yeah, you went and tried to find the best person. Now, because there's so, such <laughs> a, a, a nastiness going on out there, you got to find somebody who's going to be pretty much acceptable to every, everybody. And that's not necessarily yeah. the best choice. Not that this yeah. woman isn't a good choice, but there may have been better choices, but they would have been more controversial. Sure. Yeah, you know, on that spectrum, I don't really know, you know, exactly where she fits, but I would say it's somewhere in the area of of someone that you could get like that. You mm-hmm. know, I think that she's pretty good. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so she's... I mean, she's obviously qualified. You know, she's very good education, good life experience. You know, has been a judge on, in the in the appeal circuit. Um, you know, and has experience with these cases. Uh, you know, so she's very qualified, and and it has a lot of those human factors that you look for in a job interview or whatever. Um, you know, so I don't think she's going to have any trouble. I mean, I'm like you said, I'm sure that there are going to be some people who. Do you know Stop that two feet. two of the nominees had something yeah. in common? They both both their husbands were are gastroenterologists. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I did not know that. No. Yes. Must be a popular profession or whatever. Yeah, or but. something like that. But no, two of them. Yeah. I guess it was a qualification. Your husband must be a gastroenterologist. Uh, yeah. Know. I mean, you know, so I mean, I think that in the end that they've arrived at a at a good choice and at a solid candidate and they should get some success i don't necessarily know that i like the road that they took to get there you know with promising that they would do this that and the other before any opening was even there and then like i said some of the language they used when they uh introduced her and things uh, I just yeah, don't but they they did that. It. He did yeah. that. He did that. What I hated about it is he did that as a campaign promise. Doesn't mean that he shouldn't have gone ahead and done it. Okay, yeah. but I think to make it a campaign promise is uh, uh, it's almost uh, well, it's not an equal opportunity job, is it? Yeah, <laughs> I know? mean, I that's what I'm saying is I I mean, so they arrived at the destination, and I don't particularly care for the route that they took but they arrived at the destination right you know Mm -hmm. and the route they took wasn't i mean it's not like they did anything wrong or underhanded or illegal or or, you know i mean so i guess it's nitpicking right Mm -hmm. but you know that's okay i mean we're allowed to nitpick gives us something to do but we would kind of we would have i just don't think it was a good idea of him at yeah. that point to say it but he did it because he was he was tr- obviously trying to woo the black vote yeah i mean yeah. that's what i'm saying i mean i like to say i i i personally i just i don't want to be told here's your new supreme court justice a real consensus builder like it's a judge you yeah. i did did you just nominate her to be the secretary of housing and urban development or something i mean you know to me that's how you introduce the new Secretary of Commerce, right? Or consensus builder, you know. the job of a judge is not justice. The job of a judge is not to make everybody happy. Correct. You know, but yeah, the, I mean, I mean, that's just how I look at it. But look, I get that I can say that, and I'm not introducing her to the nation. You know, I'm not the president, so he's got things you know that he has to do to sort of sell this on the nightly news or whatever yeah, yeah. And, and make sure that you know it it gets out of hand i mean he's just got to do what he's got to do for six weeks to get it done and then you know they can move on yeah but that's just the way that it is but i mean i think i think she's a, a fine choice you know i mean there's no i can't i i can't find any fault in it as of yet right i haven't seen anything to make me shake my head and say no and I'm almost willing to accept people's choices as long as they're a qualified individual. Um, you know, so I haven't seen much. I mean, uh, that's good, though. I don't think we're going to yeah. run into any Brett Kavanaugh drama or anything, you know, with this. And that's good. The nation hopefully 
for the first time in a while can maybe nominate a, a Supreme Court justice that just gets nominated and and placed on the court. <laughs> and we don't look like fucking idiots in the process. Yeah. You know, we don't embarrass ourselves to the world like we did the last couple times around. Because I thought the last few were, you know, a pretty sad series of events. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, he's done this before, and it's it's like you're saying, I, I, I think it'd be more bang for the buck if, you know, he doesn't say that, oh, I'm going to I'm going to have a black, you know, Supreme Court first or like Supreme Court justice and and say all that stuff ahead. Instead, when he announces it, you know, then there's the the wow factor. There's the wow know, factor. Like, but wow, but here's the first, you know. But he said this while he was running for office and he was wooing votes by saying it. Yeah. You know. Yeah, you know, but I don't even know that he needed to. I mean, I don't know that well, that's I consider I consider doing that you know, kind of racist in a way, because he's thinking about yeah. well, he's thinking, hey, you know, if I nominate say I'm gonna nominate a black woman. Those blacks out there are going to be stupid enough to vote for me based on that. And, and the fact yeah, is that blacks aren't that stupid. You yeah, know? That's, I mean, that's what I was just getting ready to say was I don't, I don't this know. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. The Great American uh, Broadcast Network. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. I accidentally pressed uh, a key, key here and it started that going. I mean, and, I mean did yeah. that, did that right statement about. get... Did it get anyone to vote for him or not vote for him that was already? Well, I think going, that the concept you know that, that blacks are that stupid that they're not going to fall for yeah. that trick. You well, know, it's all, know, it's almost, I, I hate it when sometimes they do things to mollify Jews when they're running for office. And I go, do you really think I'm that stupid? I'm going to vote for you because you said, oh, I'm for the state of Israel. As a matter of fact, I don't like the state of Israel. And you just lost yeah. me, you know? Right. Now, if they said they like, think, if they like uh, what? A deli sandwich, if they like a deli sandwich with a pickle, maybe you would have my vote. Yeah. I mean, throw me a bone here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think also by him saying that is like, of all these people, I'm gonna, I'm just telling everybody, I'm, I'm looking at this group, you know, yeah. instead of at the end saying, hey, this is the person I picked that's the best person for this job. Yeah. Right, right. But you see, it, it, it. you know, had he just done it. He mm -hmm. would have surprised everybody. They would have gone, oh, good, good choice, you know. Yeah. That's a terrific mm -hmm. idea. But saying that I'm looking for a black woman, mm -hmm. and then they show a panel of, like, three black women who are up for it, you know. And I'm going, no, just, you know, say I'm looking for the next Supreme Court judge, justice, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I'll let you know when I figure out who it is. And then you come out and you say, hey, look who I found. And everybody goes, oh, hey, pick the first black woman ever to be chosen uh, to be a, a Supreme Court justice, and you go, wow, that's wonderful, that's terrific. But no, all the juice has gone out of it because we know it's going to be historic, okay, <laughs> ahead of time, and he doesn't win any points for it. Yeah, right. you know. it's disingenuous, really. It's almost like you know. Well, yeah, well, you know, I mean, it's it. Oh. I, I think it. Right. I mean, uh, if you were black, I mean, we're none of us are black here. Anybody black here? No. Me, I'm my my name is Black Man. Schwarzman yeah. is Black Man. Oh, uh, no. but no, it's not. It's not. Oh, okay. I think our my family were blacksmiths or something like that. Yeah, oh, but anyway, Schwarzman. Anyway, so uh, but uh, we're not black. But I think if I was black, I would have been a little upset by him trying to think he was going to get my vote just because he said. That he, you know, that might have made me, he might have, might have made me well, uh, not vote for him, you know. I don't know if he did that. Huh? I don't know if he really. Oh, come on, he did it while he was running yeah, for he office. Might, he didn't do it, like, after he got the job and said, you know, I'm looking for a black woman for the job. You know. Well, he, did, he did say it. No, he said it when he was running. But not yeah. after the fact, not after he, uh -huh. you know, it would have been nicer if he had said, well, now that I won, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do about this Supreme Court justice. I'm looking to make it historic and not even mm -hmm. say a black woman. I'm going to make it historic. What? They always want to, like, break the ceiling. Just run on what you stand for. Don't say it. You know, come on. It's just that. Well, I mean, obviously Biden used it as a political, yeah. you know, I, I agree. a political I was, thing. I was, can you not say it's not? Yeah, you know? yeah. But I don't, want, I don't want to sit around here knocking uh, 
Biden because uh, God knows the Republicans are doing a good enough job of that, you know. <laughs> so we have to maintain a certain unanimity, even though the guy is kind of like, you know, ah, asleep at the wheel. Um, mm -hmm. What do you think of how he's handling the Russia thing? Uh, I mean, I don't know. You know, I don't really know what more. By the way, we need some more people to call, okay? You know, I don't know what more they're going to do there. I mean, they're they're really not going to be able to come up with anything solid, if you ask me, because I'm sure that there's no one on the panel or really no one listening, probably, or even really any real Amer really any Americans that are going to be okay with saying, okay, listen, we're going to send American troops to Ukraine. We're, we're going to offload them. We're going to put them on the ground. We're going to move our warships over there. We're, we're going to, we're going to get some planes. Well, no, in the we, air. we, we don't want to do weapons. Hey, that's called world war three. Yeah. Right. That's okay. what I'm saying. It's so that's not going to happen. I mean, stopping something like this really should have taken place a long time ago. Okay. Yeah, but we had four but, years of a president who was allowing this guy to get away with bloody murder. Well, I mean, and it goes back even further than that. I mean, you know, look, the first George, you know, I'm sorry, George W. Bush was friendly with him. Obama was just indifferent, you know, and then, you know, Trump basically allowed him time. To, you know, he was an appeaser. And, and, and Biden is just, I mean, he's just in a position where, I mean, we're not going to put people there, you know, and I mean... Short of that, what, yeah. what really are you going to do? I mean, they're not going to do anything that is, you know, physical like that. Mm -hmm. It's just going to leave them with some options that are decent enough, but it's not going to accomplish anything because Putin doesn't care. OK, and I mean, you know, like I saw a headline earlier, oh, now they've sanctioned Putin himself and his foreign minister and all that. And. and some of their bank he doesn't it's he's got all that worked out i mean you know what i'm saying that's all fake if you ask me i mean none of that is going to make much difference so i mean they're not gonna i mean i guess from my perspective i i think it's fair to ask if we should help them much more because i don't see a lot of ukrainians that are that are saying we're not going to accept this. I mean, we're going to take to the streets and we're going to handle it. I mean, I'm not saying that some Ukrainians haven't, but I see a lot of them on, on you know, getting interviewed on television. They're just kind of like, eh, you know, this is, this is really bad. I, I don't know what to do. And I'm thinking, well, if you really don't want the Russians there, then I guess you should fucking. Well, call if you're a male under 60, between like 18 and 60, uh, you're required to stay in the country and fight. Yeah. But I don't know how many of them are actually going to fight or are fight. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I just, I mean, there is a formula for defeating the Russians. It's only been used a few times and it's been successful. Mm -hmm. And I just don't see it happen. Yeah. Jack. You know, personally. Well, you, you said you had, were kind of short people. And so I'm going to use some of my notes that I was going to save for after the top of the hour. Uh, on the thing about Ukraine, uh, the world community is doing the best thing. They're jacking with the money. They're saying we're going to cut off your ability to trade. Mm -hmm. they, they announced uh, sanctions today mm -hmm. against Putin and the uh, <clears throat> guy that his, sec his secretary of state. Uh you're wrong, Jack. You're we... wrong. You're wrong, Jack. How am I wrong? You're wrong because there are a lot of other countries that will still trade with him. China is going to still trade with him, which is one of the biggest trading partners you can have. I think India will continue to trade with him, which is one of the biggest trading partners you can have. Uh, he doesn't need us. And he doesn't well, need England. He doesn't need France. He doesn't need the Scandinavian countries. Well, and by the well, way, you know. Look, this country... They were entities in this country that continued to trade with Hitler during World War II. No, well, World after the, after the war went full board, they didn't. Yeah. But in the beginning, they did. IBM, for instance, 
built computers that allowed them to keep, uh, or yes. accounting yes. systems that allowed them to keep the uh, tabs on all the Jews. Ford you know. kept its plants open. Nice. Yeah. You know, to expect you got to get everybody on well, board. Well, I think Ford, they, they closed them down once we went fully to war because they couldn't no, do they it. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. No, I think they weren't allowed to, actually. You know. Ford Motor Company in Europe or well, Germany. Well, different different companies, believe it or not. Yeah. Yeah, different but still, companies. But still controlled by Henry. But the IBM, which was an American company, gave Hitler all the uh, all the accounting stuff he needed in order to keep tabs on how many Jews he had in concentration camps. I guess what I'm trying to say is yeah. no, you do what, what you can do. Well, what I'm saying is, is that I don't think these sanctions really are bothering him in the least. What, what you're nodding your head, Brian, right? You agree? Yeah, I, I agree. And when they say that they're going to freeze his money and all those other his number two guys' money, the, the oligarchs. all their monies are in companies, and, and they've like I think Josh said, yeah, they they've taken care of that stuff already. And they've got, they've it, also got enough money where those where they can say, uh, yeah, you can stop us from getting to some of our money but you're not going to get us to stop from going to all of our money and we got a shitload of money as all hidden all in companies and, and they're all their bffs and, and everything else Do you know who the richest man in the world is him, putin, right? vladimir putin yeah yeah and i'll ask this question if you were able to do it what, what would you guys do I don't know. You know, I mean, it, 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 one choice is World War Three, so that's not a choice, okay? Oh, no, and no. another choice is, I guess, doing some kind of sanctions, but I think, uh, I just don't know what I would do. That's why I'm not president, okay? I think I know what I would, what I would what do. What would you do, Tony? I would send the troops there. I would have killed Hitler right off the bat before he attacked us. I think you gotta, how do we know he doesn't stop there? Say if he goes to Poland. He may be so embracing, you know what I say? What do we have the greatest military conflict? Yeah, uh, do, want, do, want, do you want to start World War III? I think you gotta stop him. I do you want to, to, you want to start World War III in which the odd, the, the, the result of that is gonna be far worse than what's going on right now. But say if he takes over Ukraine and goes into Poland and that's NATO, then you're gonna be- He's not gonna go into Poland. Because it is NATO. Know. Because it is NATO, and then he has a whole bunch of wolf ass on his against him. We can't go in to uh, into into uh, um, <coughs> Ukraine. Ukraine because uh, they're because they're not NATO, and so we if we go in there, we're going in there without the legal uh, right to do so. So then, pretty much. In that case, we're all dealing in a hypothesis, pretty much like he can, he does have, what you should be worried about is he has an allegiance with China. So if everybody would have, he, everybody he has, has a, he has a, he has a relationship with China. Uh, I won't say it's an it, allegiance. But did we ever think that Germany wouldn't try to take over the world? What's to say that history doesn't repeat itself? Well, I mean, uh, I don't think that. I, I don't think that as big a country as Russia is, okay, that they are capable of taking over the whole world. That concept no. is ridiculous. You, you, they don't have enough manpower to take over the whole world. They don't have enough manpower to take over the United States. Am I right, Josh? You seem to be agreeing. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, Russians, you know, have a have a large population, but they're their military strength compared to NATO is almost nothing. I mean, I think the Russian army is made up of about 300,000 people, um, if I heard correct. And NATO has about three and a half million troops. Mm -hmm. um, plus they outnumber, you know, as a whole, they outnumber the Russians, yeah. um, not only in manpower, but in uh, infrastructure, uh, warships, planes, mm -hmm. um, you know, munitions, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. the, the number's pretty large. So, uh, you know, these gains are pretty easy for the Russians, but anything, I mean, I, they're not going to do anything large scale. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they're, unless we turn it into a war, a world war, but I mean, like and you're saying, question, I, I just don't see that coming. The big question for the Russians is, even if you win, how do you hold it? Do you really want to try to hold a country 
of 350 million people, half of which are in Texas and are armed to the fucking teeth. The guy that yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the Russians aren't. They're not coming. They're here. not stupid. I mean, you know, I mean, the, 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 you know this was this was a a Cold War fear that was promulgated years ago that oh the Russians are going to come here and they're going to take over the country to take over this country you just don't have the assets to do it you don't have the manpower mm-hmm. to do it not in a country like this one which would wholeheartedly resist that kind of thing uh, but nevertheless I mean the problem is is that. What is so horrible about what's happening in uh, in um, um, Ukraine? Ukraine. God, my mind's blank tonight mm. on that name. What's happening tonight in the today in the Ukraine that's so terrible is that Russia is being a, a bully, a deadly bully. Okay, there was no reason for them to go in like they have and try and bomb things. Uh, especially apartment houses, things that have no strategic value, all right? If you want to go after an air base or something, okay, that's a lo- logistically that's something to go after. But he's going after the general population, and this is ab- abominable. It is just, it's horrible what he's doing. And somehow he has to be called to account for that, but how we do that short of the United Nations which has never had any major muscle, you know, is, uh, is, is ridiculous. Putin is playing a game of, I can do this and get away with it. And maybe he's right. Well, if we're not going to do anything to help them, then we're just all watching the news. Yeah, but what do you do, Tony? What do you do? Do you go, you go in there? Well, then you got to bring, if you're, if we feel that he's killing innocent people, then what's the solution? Well, the solution is hopefully we have armed the people in uh, uh, the country and uh, why, why is my mind a blank on that name every time I mention it tonight? Don't feel bad about it, Matt. It happens to us all. You yeah. know, sometimes we um, just, uh, just uh, won't get out. But uh, they, we have armed them. They do have a lot of munitions and they are fighting back and they are bringing down jets, you know, and they are... <laughs> killing a lot of the Russians, which is good. Did you is hear good. what the former president, the previous president, did today in Ukraine? Who? He grabbed an AK, uh, uh, the guy that was the president before, Zelensky, whatever his yeah, name is. Yeah, yeah. He grabbed his AK-47 and went to the streets at 57 years old. He said, really? I'm here with my people. That's what it takes. Well... Maybe what it takes is doing something that Putin doesn't understand. Well, the guy who is currently the president says, I'm staying right here. I'm not mm-hmm. going anywhere. And he said, this may be the last you see of me alive. Said mm-hmm. that this afternoon. Yeah. Or, and, or maybe we do something really wild. We say, okay, Ukraine, which I almost forgot how to say just a moment ago. See? Ukraine <laughs> wants to be part of NATO. We'll give you Venezuela. Make Venezuela part of the Warsaw Pact. Let's do something bold, different, and dynamic. Something unexpected. Make the Ukraine that it, we, we, they can't, we can't do that. We well, can't, we, can we can't make them part of NATO just like that. We, 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 we can say it even if we don't do it. Give Putin something to think about that he hasn't thought about. Yeah, but okay, so you make him part of NATO, and now we take all the NATO troops and go in there, and it's World War III. I mean, there's no way he's got us on a chessboard, and he's got us in check, so then, to speak. And maybe it's time to say to him, unless the leaders pay a cost in blood this continues let's make the, let's make the leaders shoot no, it like, and and w- where do we go I and once, if we go in there and we push them out of there and then they start pushing back and fighting against us do we go into russia i'm no. sorry napoleon <laughs> tried that and didn't do very well it's hitler time, did it, it, tried that and didn't know, do very well you know, i know i'm crazy and it's time maybe for crazy solutions. Maybe it's time to say World War III is unthinkable, but we can have some kind of war. And we go down the list of leadership 
in the government till we get to the two mothers that don't want to see their kids shot. Okay, well, we can't go in there until they are part of NATO. We have no legal reason yeah. to go in there outside of saying we're compassionate people, we can't stand seeing people die, but we've, you know, you, that's not the reason you go into a war, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, the question I'm going to ask on my show, The Intersection, coming up in, what, 20 minutes? Mm -hmm. is going to be this. Where are the Borg when we really need them? Yeah, right, right. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a terrible situation. I saw, st I saw footage today of, yeah. of people with their kids sending them off on trains, crying, fathers. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, it's heart-wrenching. And how a human being like Vladimir Putin can do this is beyond me how, how uh, it's horrible it's just horrible well he's a product of the secret service of russia he's product of the kgb, mm -hmm. KGB i'm sure we've got some guys in the cia who would think nothing of doing the same thing well we had a cia we had the head of the cia as a president yeah yeah and and, and nobody remembers that yeah Anybody name which president was a uh, was a former head of the CIA? Oh, Mr. Carter, Mr. Carter, I can. <laughs> huh? Well, you can, but uh, who, who else? Anybody? Josh, you can, right? Of yeah. course you can. Of course you can. <laughs> was that Josh, Bush? It was Bush. Josh was probably a member of the CIA. First, at first Daddy Bush, yeah. Oh, really? Or as we call him down here in Texas, Pappy Bush. Yeah, I mean, everybody used to say to me, uh, "How would you like somebody who's the head of the?" Uh, uh, the Russian Secret Service to become Prime Minister of Russia, and I said, well, we had the same thing happen here. Our president was a former head of the CIA. Uh, and what's that space force that we started a couple of years ago under Trump? What are they doing while all this is going on? Oh, they've got the station. Well, they, I mean, they printed up the stationery. <laughs> I, I think some of them, was, some I, of them have business cards. I was hoping maybe they had the uh, Jewish laser beam. Well, that you remember who the head of Space Force was, don't you? No, I don't remember. Pence. That's right. Really? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, well, I since... I knew he did something. Huh? You knew I knew he did something. <laughs> Best line of the night. I knew he did something. <laughs> I knew he did something. On that note... I'll see you at the top of the. Oh, hour. really? Gonna leave me with just okay? All right. Well, I'll stick around for a while. I'll stick around for another, another five yeah, minutes. Yeah. I, I got a couple things I got to do before I. What? I, I'll tell you. I, I got to go to the bathroom before I start the show. <laughs> it's an old bladder. Really? It's an old bladder. You know what to do? Take some ibuprofen before you go on the air. That's what I do, and that'll keep you from peeing. Are you shitting me? I'm not shitting you. It's a huh. trick I've been using for years. Especially when I had a bad prostate problem and I was doing a radio show at Sirius XM and I didn't want to have to run off in the middle of an hour and, and go to the bathroom. Uh, so I, I found that by taking ibuprofen, I, uh, I, I, it, it, it uh, slows it up. Yeah. yeah. Learn something new with Alex Bennett. And, yeah, and but, the the, but on the other hand, ibuprofen can give you kidney stones, so don't take too much of it because I got a kidney stone. <laughs> You may all remember my kidney stone. I remember your kidney, but more importantly, I remember my kidney stone. You'll never forget your first You'll kidney never stone. Forget it. <laughs> no thanks. You go. What? Oh, you've had one too? No, 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 no. But my friend has them um, like every couple of years. Oh my god. Really? Yeah, I heard it's really painful. Really? My first wife's son, when he was 15, 16, had a kidney stone. Well, here we go again, by the way. Goodbye, but goodbye, everybody. Hey, I, I said the kid was 15. The kid was 15. That's, that's young, 15. Yeah, yeah. You know, these young, it, it was like a, something that happened. You can get them at any age. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah you know. it's, it's uh, you know. And uh, he was in absolute misery, and I had one, like, the next year and i said god kid i didn't know yeah. how much you were suffering till this yeah. thing tried to pass well, what do you all think about the way trump is handling himself is it you know i can't believe he's so stupid as to think that people won't think badly of him as a result of being pro-putin you know 
I mean, he he's come out and called and said, oh, he's a, he's a, a smart operator. He's smart. He's doing it right. You know, he's doing the right thing. Gave the Democratic Party the best sound uh, bite they could have for the yeah, coming you know, election. You know something? Trump isn't running for president. He's not <laughs> going to get the nomination. Slowly, the Republican Party is getting sour on him. They're not doing it publicly, but they're getting sour on him. And when it, you know, he's still got to get the nomination. And I don't think he's going to get it. I don't think I. He may not even try. You know. But you got to admit, it's a great soundbite against running, uh, uh, running against. Yeah, but Republican. you know something? People who are for him probably are thinking, "Oh, look what we got! We got, we got uh, everybody. Watch your language." She's whis what's she whispering to you? Tell them what you told me. No. <laughs> she wants me to tuck her in bed. She wants Aww. you to tuck her into bed. She has, yeah, she has early competition tomorrow in uh, Dublin. That's like uh, 45 minutes away. So yeah. she's got to get up early to do makeup and hair and all that now stuff. How so long she... does it take you to tuck her in? Uh, just uh, two seconds. <laughs> go go do it. Go do it. Be a good daddy. Okay. We'll be okay. here when you get back. Okay. Jack won't be so. Bye, Jack. <laughs> well, you can come join us uh, on the intersection. I wouldn't mind having Brian drop by. Well, he has right? to go to bed at some time. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, you know he has. A, he has a, He's he's the one here that's working. As is Josh. Mm -hmm. Josh has. To, well, he doesn't have to work tomorrow. That's why he does the show on um, on uh, Fridays. And uh, Jeff. Jeff's just an old guy. He sleeps whenever he wants to. Right, Jeff? I do. Now, yeah. what is Tony Magno doing these days, other than sending me recipes? Oh, God. Oh, I'm self-employed, and I have books to uh, sell tomorrow. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Ah! Yeah, so I got a, and I got a, and I'm buying a comic collection that I have over there that I'm going to go through, so I have plenty of things. You can to do. got any plastic, man? Actually, I don't know. I might. I, don't know, I've been I loved Plastic Man when I was a kid. Yeah, but from him, it'll cost you a fortune. I know, I know. You know, I, mean, I have a box of for that I'm buying. But don't worry, I don't use those parts of my body anymore, so he can oh. have them. I got a lot of things all over. Wasn't there the Plastic Man? Here we go. Here's the here's the really heady discussion. He had the right? glasses. The, the, well, Plastic Man was was Marvel, right? DC. DC. Okay, but Marvel had a, had somebody who they was like that. They had a ripoff of him. I'm trying to think. Was it? I forgot what his name was. I mean, well, this is fantastic. Reed Richards was kind of like that because he stretched. Yeah. I always thought that they kind of took off of that a little bit. But yeah. I don't know who else. Yeah. Oh, I kind of vaguely remember yeah. that Marvel had uh, a duplicate of a Plastic Man and somebody. Well, didn't the, didn't, Mo, didn't both DC and Marvel kind of imitate each other with certain characters all the time? Uh, well, I think Marvel was more revolutionary with their characters. I think with their with their because they were hitting more of the pop culture and stuff like that. Yeah, because I mean, I don't know. I'd have to think about who would be copying who. It'd be hard because Marvel had a lot of, at least as far as I see, like original characters. Like nobody had a Wolverine type. Right. You know, right. That Wolverine was totally new. Like, you know, out of the blue. That was in the 70s. So I would say Wolverine is so unique. He is so popular. Forget it. That book just... Wolverine? Wolverine just Why popular. is Wolverine that popular? Oh, because when he came out, I remember that. I have two copies of it, but that book's expensive. But I remember when it came out, it was just that the way they portrayed him, because he was like almost like a vigilante, stone cold killer, but his costume was cool. And then it's... If you see the... The Adam Tanning your claws, how they click out. When I first read the comic, I thought, wow, this guy is cool looking. Like, you know, he just had a mysterious battle and he would just kill you. And he couldn't die because he was like over a thousand years old. Mm. Was, oh, like, really? He, he was that old? Yeah, he was like, well, put, I should give you a comic. In the movie, like in the the movies, movie. did they make him that old? No. Well, he was mutant. He was, uh, he was got put together. His origin is actually really cool. Yeah. You would enjoy his origin. They should actually. I don't think they might have portrayed it in the movie. I have to see which one. But yeah. really, Tony needs his own show. Tony needs a show on here. Yeah. Mm. Just give him some coffee and a couple of comics, and he'd be fine. No, what we should do is we should do a show with you, and then you can show comics 
to the audience. I, w- I would enjoy, like, if you ask me stuff about comics, I enjoy talking about it. Like, I would pick you out something to read, Alex, that you would like. Like, I would leave you, I would send you books to read that you probably would enjoy. By the way, by the way, this guy with his comic collection could probably buy and sell any of us. Am I right, Tony? I'm not trying to brag because I bought him cheap. I have so much. Yeah, but I mean, you, you, I have so much I couldn't even buy. I have to leave my sister notes just in case I go. She, my brother knows what stuff was worth, but I would leave people stuff. I have stuff that I would leave people. Do you have insurance? What happens if you're placed? I do have insurance. Yeah, I went to Allstate. I had to, I had to put everything in a spreadsheet out. So it took me. I don't even have it all in. I only have what's in my personal inventory. Uh-huh. I had to have everything itemized, and I had to take pictures of anything over a thousand dollars for the guy. It took me a while, so it's like a work in progress. So did you come out with a worth? In other words, how much is how much is the collection insured for? And where, where do you live? Give me the apartment, <laughs> yeah. the address. I mean, it's I'm not, doing something I'm not trying to drop a number, but it's an easy quarter of a million. I, would, I mean, that's a low ball. That's low, because I'm not even dealing uh, with I would ball. say it's probably worth more. If, oh, you, yeah. if you started going ahead and selling it all, piece yeah, by if piece. If I told you, Alex, I'm gonna give you this comic, but it only books for five hundred, but it's but it's really worth four thousand. Yeah, but I know that you have like a hundred copies of one particular issue. Yeah, well, a couple of issues. But you don't want to sell those. Fa- you wouldn't sell all hundred at once because no, then I have the price would keep going down on them. Yeah, I always have a stash. I could bring you in right now, like ten spawns that I already even have graded. Yeah. See, when Image Comics came out, mm-hmm. I'm a big Todd McFarlane fan. I think he's so cool because. He created it. He created Spawn, but Todd was Spawn. Alex, he goes, you know what? Yeah. He wanted to launch it in Marvel, but Marvel wanted to keep the rights. He says, no, 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 that's my character. He says, you know what he said? I'm going to start my own comic label. So he pulled all the hot artists together, and they launched their own label, Image. Right. So when right. Image came out, and I heard about it. I told him, I said, you know what? Whatever he does, I'm going to buy the first You're there. Yeah. And I'm going to get 100 copies of each. And I did that for all the big artists, Jim Lee, Tom McFarlane. Well, you see, this is a whole world I, I know very little about because I never was yeah. a big comic fan yeah. when I was a kid. But I would like to pick out stuff that you would enjoy reading. Though. You would like it if I gave you something to read. You probably. I find comic books read. hard to read. <laughs> because I'd have to give you a trade paperback where it would be one whole story. So you'd have to keep picking up an issue. So it begins and ends. Yeah, That's I what guess. I you. you know. But... Uh, uh, yeah, I love. I blame my mother. Started. Were you ever comic. a comic book <laughs> fan, Josh? You know, right? No. No. See, I mean, yeah. he's far too serious for that. He might, Tony. Like it, though, Josh. Huh? He might like it. I think Josh is more. Josh, you like the sports. You would read sports books, right? Stuff like that. No, I don't. <laughs> okay. Hey, Tony. Uh, yeah. Do you have uh, any uh, comic books featuring the question? Old oh, Steve Ditko? Yeah. I That's might have name. some. I love Ditko. I have I actually have a horror book. I've been buying his Charlton's Ditko when he left Marvel. I'm a big Ditko fan. So whatever artwork he has, I could probably bring uh Ditko, I'm a big anything he does on artwork, I would co- I collect like mad. Yeah. Like I'll have a I have a big Do you Ditko know what fan. I did years ago? I think I told you this. I emceed the uh, comic book awards show. I know. I, I, Stanley I I asked that. me to, to MC. I would have did anything to go there. And the guy who, did, Bob Kane was there. Oh, and I, a young I, guy who was the new enfant terrible of comic books. I'm trying to remember his name now. Mm-hmm. But if I said his name, you'd probably jizz all probably over the screen. I would probably wet my pants Yeah, you probably I would, do, I would clean your house and cook you for a month just to go to that <laughs> show. Well, name some big, <laughs> uh, uh, some of the old, uh, co- not the old oh, ones. Uh, Jack Kirby? No, guys in the oh, in in the in the, in the oh uh, this would be in the uh, this would be in the uh, uh, 70s? S- early seventies, yeah. Okay, so you got Kirby Stanley, Jim Steranko. No, no, this was no, a kid. Uh, he was a kid at the time. Marvel Comics. No, DC. Uh, okay, uh, not it can't be George Perez yet because he started no, with no. George no. Perez. He's oh well, up. yeah. Uh, Come up with some names and I'll 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 tell you which one. I forgot his name now. But John the, Byrne. But he no. was he was the big deal at that point because he was now. No, no, no. Tony, think of it this way: you know that song about talking about my generation. Yeah, you better go, Jack. You gotta. Oh yeah. You gotta oh pee God. before the show. Yeah. Uh, or t- find that book, Jack. I'll send it to you. An image. All right. All right. Listen. While you guys continue, I'm gonna go take a whiz, and I'll see you at the top of the hour. Oh, good. Good. And, uh, 
why don't we sign off now and then he's gonna have to rush back from the bathroom if you know you can figure out how to sign out of zoom just <laughs> oh, <laughs> well we'll be here all night now there, here he goes i think i think he may have found it i think there we go okay here he goes we were here so anybody up to anything interesting this weekend? How about you, Josh? Anything? Mm. Not too much this weekend, though. No. We're traveling next week, so not, nothing major. This During week. the week or a weekend? Uh, middle of the week and then all through the weekend. Oh, okay. So he and I and a couple other people get together and have a call on Saturday nights with each other. So I guess we won't be, you won't be around for that one. Uh, probably tomorrow will be okay, but next weekend probably yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. We'll be out. Of, we'll be out of state, so probably yeah, not. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it, 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 it's interesting because it, it's a different kind of conversation. It's just it goes anywhere we want it to go, but it's also it's, it has a certain freedom because people are not as refined about what they say because kind of they're afraid when it's being broadcast that they're going to say something mm -hmm. wrong, you know. Oh, well, here's somebody. Where are you going, Josh? Where are you going? We are going to Spartanburg, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And what is in Spartanburg? I bet it's something historical. Well, yeah, we're staying there, but we're going to visit. Uh, we might visit Congaree National Park, which is one of the 62 national parks. But uh, yeah. we're also going to visit going to visit Cowpens National Battlefield, 96 National Historic Site, and Kings Mountain National Battlefield. So couple spots in the southern theater of the american now what do you do when you go there i mean do you uh, the tours of, of of it and they show you where certain parts of the battle took place and you know some of them have tours and some of them don't these are pretty smaller uh sites and everything so mm -hmm. uh you know, just go to the visitor center sometimes they have uh, orientation videos they usually have like a driving tour you can take you can visit uh certain parts of the there's a battle. place like gettysburg Orders. pretty much un un changed i mean uh, or are there par parking lots and uh, uh malls mm -hmm. uh no it, it, they're all a little different it depends where you go but um a lot of them are really well preserved uh you know like gettysburg for example is is uh not real you know big time development or anything okay. uh, developed or anything and they have really preserved you know Ton, almost all of the battlefields at a place like that um mm -hmm. and then you know somewhere like where we're headed they basically preserved all of the battlefield because it's not <clears throat> nearly as large a landmass as gettysburg wow have you, you ever done one of those uh reenactments of the civil war no no I don't, I don't do any of that but uh you know i i have a you know i've told you off air this you know i finished another graduate degree uh for something and i have to do you know i have to complete another dissertation um which is going to be huge and that's what i've been working on that's what i'll be doing this weekend but i believe a lot in trying to visit the places that you will substantially write about mm -hmm. and i'm going to cover the southern theater of the american revolution so i yeah. believe trying to visit places that you write about if it's possible well oh, yeah. there's our theme song uh, and another week has come to an end. I want to thank uh, Jeff for being here and uh, for Brian for being here and Jack Bishop for being here and Josh for being here and Tony for giving us a lecture on comics. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you all uh, hopefully next week. Uh, uh, so give a big, uh, big wave goodbye and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, folks. Oh, there's my hand. Okay, there we go. And there goes our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, and Jack Bishop will be next with the intersection. Let me just, I have to do a few things here. Jack Bishop will be next with the intersection over most of this same gab net. So stay tuned for that. And maybe you want to join him. He's used a Skype and it's called GabNet Live is the address on Skype. In the meantime, I'm Alex Bennett. We'll see you again. Uh, Monday for our big Monday show at 4 o'clock, and we broadcast that on Facebook. And then we'll see you again on Wednesday, 10.30, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, 
tell her I love her, okay? And please, uh, get vaccinated if you haven't been. Wear a mask if you didn't get vaccinated. And if you don't wear a mask, stay the hell away from me. I don't care what the CDC says. Good night, everybody. Bye.